بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد A question that I would like to pose to you to introduce this lecture, inshallah, is what is the thing that all of us have in common? If you were to think about one thing that all of us have in common, like if you look to the right of you and to the left of you, despite all the differences between you and your neighbor and your neighbors and those sitting beside you and the back and the back row, and the back row, and so on, and so on, and so on. Different. But if there's one thing that we all have in common, and if you expand the circle a little bit, and the radius, and you go to the city, and to the country, and to the continent, and then globally to all of humanity, what is the only one thing that we all have in common? Ibn Hazm, rahimahullah, is a scholar, a giant of Islamic scholarship and Islamic intellectualism who lived in the fifth century of Hijrah. He says that I've scanned contemplated humanity and despite their many, many differences and diversity in background, experiences, beliefs, hopes, dreams, goals, where they live, many differences physical and spiritual between them. There's one thing that unites them all. And that thing is tardulham, expelling and removing sorrow and grief. He says that every movement that a human being takes, he and she, they take to achieve that purpose. They learn because of this. Whatever they learn. They acquire new information and new skill because of this. They eat because of this. They drink because of that. They move because of this. And some have commented on the words of Ibn Hazm, rahimahullah, and they say, in fact, tardul ham, expelling grief and avoiding it, is actually a means. But rather, the real purpose is happiness. Because why do you avoid pain? To be numb? Or do you want to be happy? It's because you want to be happy. So happiness and its pursuit is what unites every human being, Muslim and non-Muslim, educated and not, rich or not, male or female. You think about it. Why do you eat? I'm hungry. Do you stop when your hunger has subsided? Or do you keep eating? Keep eating, right? You keep eating. No, yeah, you do. He's starting and saying no. You do. Why, why do you do that? Because you enjoy what you eat. Why do you drink coffee? Or tea? How many people here drink coffee? How many here are tea drinkers? Yeah, I'm, I'm a tea drinker, so I'm with you, right? I don't like coffee as much. Why do you drink them? You don't need that. Why do you put sugar? Unless you're, you know, diabetic, right? So why do you put sugar in? Do you need it? It's just nice. So everything that you do is about happiness and its pursuit. Now a lot of us, non-Muslims, but a lot of us who are Muslim, when we seek and try to find this happiness, we try to find us in this world, here, right? The problem with that is what? Is that this world, the way that Allah designed it, the way that it is, it is not supposed to, is it's incapable of making you happy the way that you want. It can't. It can temporarily give you this happiness. Why do you shop? I need things. Do you stop when you fulfill that need? Again, you're nodding yes. I just, I don't know if I believe you. Okay. No, you don't. You really don't. Because every year you feel the urge to buy a new phone. Right? There's that constant consumption and desire to buy a new thing every year. 
and they're good at convincing you that you need it. You really don't need it. A new car, a new house, uh, upgrading this, upgrading that. And why do you keep buying? Because there's a thrill to it. The moment that you expect, okay, I'm going to buy this thing and it's going to change my life. Uh, that's what I say to myself. This phone has so much. And once I buy it, I'll be able to do this, 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 and this, and that with it. Guess what? What happens when I buy it? 50% of what the phone has to offer, I never really touch. Uh, right? Yeah, I see some nuts. I never really touch it. It was a potential. It was a possibility. It was a nice dream, but it never really happens. And then I get bored with it. And that's what happens with this, things in this dunya. You get bored with them. And you need something else. And that something else gives you a little bit of happiness. But then you get bored with it. And you move on and you move on and you move on. Because you are still pursuing happiness. And anything that will bring joy to your heart. But the problem with this dunya again is that it is incapable of doing this. If you give someone health... After some time, health is not important to them. If you give someone all the money that you can imagine in this world, money is no longer important to them. If you give someone all the free time that they would want, they would be bored with their own life. Every ni'mah, some of the ulama have said, insightfully, think about it. When you are given a ni'mah, a blessing, Attached to it, there is some hidden pain. That is the pain of loss. You get a new car, it's beautiful, sparkling. But then you're afraid. You can't really fully enjoy it. Why? What if I crash this thing? What if somebody crashes it? Oh, yeah, you can never borrow this car to drive. I don't trust you with it. So you actually start agonizing over the possibilities of loss. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And by the way, is having children recommended or not? Yeah? Yeah? It's not a tricky question. I mean, yeah, yes or, yeah, it is. It's, it is really, yeah, it's recommended. And yet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about children that they are majbanatun, mabkhalatun, mahzana. They are, there is, they are a cause for cowardness and stinginess and sadness. He's not saying don't have them. He says be aware that they do bring that influence too. That is before you have them, you're brave. But then after you have them, you say, I'm not going to risk this and I'm not going to risk that. I have little kids and I need to take care, care of them. Before that, you may be more generous with your income. I'm going to donate here, I'm going to donate that. But when you have responsibility, the shaitan comes to you and he says, you need to take care of them, save money. And of course you need to save money, but he pushes it even further. Don't spend. Don't give sadaqah. They need it. And then the last one, mahzana. If you remember the day when you received your child and the happiness the elation that you experience. But also, there is sadness. When they become sick. When they go on their own in this world. What's going to happen to them? Are they going to get married? Will they be happy? Will they will have children? So there is worry. Constant. With matters related to this dunya. So this dunya promises. But fails to deliver. Promises happiness. But every happiness or every gift that you have in this dunya is assaulted by two forces. A force that is ham and a force that is hazan. Your state at this particular moment in life, as you stand, this minute, you're subject to those two negative forces which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had sought Allah's protection from. Ham and hazan and they're always attacking you ham is about the future anxiety what you worry about what's going to happen tomorrow and hazan is about the past the things that you lost the things that you missed you ruminate over the fact that you lost them 
And every time you think about it, it brings new, fresh pain as if you are living this now. And there's also a sadness with what is happening at this moment. The pain that you're experiencing at this moment, and it's yet to leave you. That's sadness. There is no complete happiness in this dunya, in this world. But when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ya Allah, and this is part of his often recited dua, the, part, the first part of it that we'll focus on in this lecture. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al wal hazan. Ya Allah, I seek your protection from ham and hazan, from worry and grief. It means that you need Allah's protection to be able to overcome that on your own. You can't. You believe me? Huh? Can you do it on your own? Nope. That's why even Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And by the way, I mean, him being Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, don't think that he did not experience sadness. In Sahih al-Bukhari, it tells that once when a group of the Sahaba got martyred, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sat down and he was so sad. He said you could recognize sadness in his face sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. He's the most perfect human being, but no human being on the face of this earth can escape this force. He cannot. You're weak on your own, but with Allah azza wa jal, you're strong. With Allah azza wa jal, you can overcome. With Allah Azza wa Jal, the forces that are attacking you, propelled, guided, emboldened by the shaitan, will be defeated. Because now you have two opposite promises and two opposite forces. You have the shaitan and you have Allah Azza wa Jal and his guidance. The shaitan does what? And I want you inshallah to remember a few points. This is one of them. At some time when you are anxious and sometimes when you are sad, I want you to see the hand of the shaitan behind these thoughts. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, The shaitan promises you poverty and commands you to commit obscenity. So when you're sitting and thinking about, will I be fired? Will I get that raise? Will I get that job? If I don't get it, how will I feed myself? How will I feed my kids? What's going to happen to them? Will I be able to pay that rent? And these thoughts continue and they progress and you find yourself unable to sleep and you're absolutely anxious over tomorrow. Who's behind this? Huh? Didn't fall asleep yet, right? You still with me? Okay, good, good. Uh, the shaitan. The shaitan. Because what does Allah say? Al-shaytan yu'idukum what? Al-faqr. Poverty. You're going to be poor. You're going to lose all your money. You can't give zakah. You can't give sadaqah. You're not going to be blessed. Allah is not, is not going to rescue you. He's not going to answer your dua if you ask. Where, where is he actually? If you have these thoughts, you have to recognize. The shaytan is sitting right beside you. And what do you say, by the way, if you want the shaytan to run away? A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. And what does A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim say? It's not, these are not just words. You're running to Allah Azza wa Jal away from the shaytan. You say, Ya Allah, protect me. As you run away from an enemy inside a fortress and you close the doors and you say, Now I'm safe. Now I'm protected. Say, Ya Allah, give me this protection from the shaytan so he's not able to assail and attack me. So if you find yourself worried about the future, that comes from the shaitan. And if you find yourself sad about the past, why did this happen to me? Why did he insult me, talk to me about this? Why did I not get that job, that position? Why did I not, am I not successful as so and so? Why am I not rich? Why am I not healthy? Why do I not have this and everybody else has it? Why am I sad and they're happy? Why can't they travel and I can't? Why, 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 why? And with these comparisons, you find yourself descending into deeper and deeper despair and loss of hope. Understand at the same time that beside you is a shaitan that is feeding these thoughts, that is agitating your heart. 
that is linking your happiness to this dunya. But Allah Azza wa Jal makes a promise to the believers. Beginning from the time of Adam alayhi salam all the way to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passing through us until the day of judgment. That is if you are with Allah azza wa jal there is no sadness. You can do insha'Allah this research on your own. Take the root ha-za-na. Ha-za-na. And go search the Quran. And see instances where that word is mentioned. And you will find that every time that is mentioned on the tongue of the believers or about the believers, Allah is negating sadness. Negating sadness meaning that there is no room for it if you are a believer. What did Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was in the cave with Abu Bakr say to him, when Abu Bakr was anxious that they're going to find you, Ya Rasulullah. They're right outside. And it takes a lot of certainty and faith for you to believe at that moment that you're not going to be captured. When your enemy is right, standing right outside, and if they just turn, look under, they got you. What does he say to Abu Bakr? Who knows? La... Tahzan. Why? Inna Allaha ma'ana. This is only for him? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Or is it general? It's general. Do not be sad because Allah is with us. So if Allah is with you, you're not supposed to be what? Sad. Sad over what? Why would you be sad? And here you start making the transition from the dunya to the akhirah. And Ibn Hazm rahimahullah to complete what he said. And he said, and I looked at all ways people try to achieve happiness. And I found that whenever they try to achieve happiness in this world, it makes them sad. If you're famous, by the way, uh, by the way, who would like to be famous? Uh, that's a tricky question, huh? If you're famous, you think more people will like you, right? But what do you get also? A tax. Huh? So he said every way that they try to achieve this happiness through this world, they fail. And the only thing that is safe when they try to achieve happiness through it is working for the hereafter. Because nothing can undermine it and nothing can touch it is with Allah Azza wa Jal. If I say, okay, I'm going to make you rich. I can't. But suppose I'm a millionaire. I'm not. But suppose I can give you millions of dollars. This is going to make you rich. This is going to make you happy. What do you think? It's going to make your life easier maybe. But there's always the fear that I may lose it. And if I lose it, how will I live? And then people will start coming closer and closer to you. And then you don't know if they're right beside you because they like you or because they like what? Your money. So if that doesn't make it bring happiness. The rich don't have a monopoly and in fact, they're not happy. Success, worldly success, and it's on its own, does not bring happiness. A Wall Street investor who's been consulting on stocks and what have you, whose job earned him $1.2 million a year. He said, I quit my job and went into teaching. He's not Muslim. I went, quit my job and went into teaching. Why? Because my life was empty. Can you imagine? I said, I was doing work and I was earning a lot of money, but I did not feel I was doing anything meaningful. So I quit that lucrative job. A lot of us will kill someone to get it. And he said, I just quit that because if I teach these young minds, at least I can see the value of what I'm doing. I'm connecting with other human beings on a meaningful level, not on a cynical level where I just see profit behind their faces. 
Here I'm trying to build something meaningful. So لا تحزن. Do not be sad. Because Allah Azza wa Jal is with you. Why would you be sad? I lost something. I want you to ask yourself, if you are with Allah Azza wa Jal, have you lost anything? Suppose somebody died dear to you. Will you not see them again? What do you think? Will you see them again? It's a temporary separation. But they will see, but you will see them again. If you lost money, large sums of money, won't Allah Azza wa Jal Rabbul Alameen compensate you for that loss when you meet him? Yes or no? Where in fact, if he were to ask you, if you were to keep that million dollar, we're talking about millions again because I'm assuming I'm a millionaire. So if we say that, you lost a million dollars and Allah were to compensate you for that, rewards in Jannah and were to ask you, would you prefer to have that million dollars back in the dunya or the compensation in this life? What would you say? The compensation in Jannah. What would you say? The compensation in Jannah, Rabbul Alameen. I'm happy that you've taken it away. Why would you be sad when you know that what Allah had given you, had given you for reason? There's wisdom and there's mercy behind it. And when he has taken it away from you, he has taken it also for a reason. With wisdom and guess what? With mercy behind it. So why would you be sad? Yes, there is some pain. But then you turn to Allah Azza wa Jal and you say, Lillahi ma a'ta wa lillahi ma akhad. Allah, this is yours. You've given it. This is yours. You've taken it. And the compensation is with Allah Azza wa Jal. You're sick or you're in distress at this particular moment and you feel that you can't go on. You can't continue. Yes, on your own, you're going to collapse. And by the way, please don't rush and take medication. Don't rush and just grab the first thing that's going to give you temporary relief. Don't go and do something haram to numb the pain. Please don't do that. Because it's going to wear off. If somebody goes and becomes drunk just not to think about their trouble, when they become sober again, did the problem go away? No, it's just still there and you have a headache. There's a hangover. You try to take something else that numbs the pain, but the problem has escalated and it's compounded. And it's not even worse. Don't run away from it. Confront it. How do you confront it? By being close to Allah Azza wa Jal. By fixing this. Here. By being making your heart a slave of Allah Azza wa Jal, not a slave of the dunya. So I'm in distress at this moment. I can't go on. But don't you know the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Increased rewards from Allah come from increased testing. And if Allah loves the people, He tests them. So if you're in pain at this moment, if you're suffering, if you are sick, I know it's difficult. I know. I know you want it to be over. I know. I know sometimes you feel that you're going to collapse. I understand. But you feel that way because you've been carrying this weight on your shoulder on your own. And you are going to collapse if you do this. But if you decide that this weight is not mine, this burden is not mine, I'm going to have Allah Azza wa Jal carry it. If you know that when Allah loves the people, He tests them. And that this ordeal that I'm going through could be a sign of Allah's love. What would you want more? Who loves you? Not just your spouse. It's good if he loves you. It's good if she loves you. Not just your children. It's wonderful if they say, I love you. But what matters, really matters, is with the creator of all, 
the one who really matters, the one who's always with you. He has been with you since you've been conscious every single moment till now loves you. You say, what is that sign? He says, I'm going to test you and you're going to be patient. You're not going to rebel. You're not going to reject me. You're going to still trust me. And you're going to be patient and you're going to persevere and you're going to ask me for support. And you're going to feel that no one can help you. This is, by the way, why Allah tests you. So you'll despair of humanity. So your heart is no longer dependent on the doctor and the therapist and the friend and the spouse and the child because all of them evaporate and all of them melt away and you only see Rabbul Alameen who has all power. And when you see that Allah has all power, you don't want to turn to any other human being and say, help me with my problem. You can do this later, later. But the first impulse is, Ya Allah, help me. To you, I'm turning. And if you turn to Allah like that, then your heart is a slave of Allah. And if your heart is a slave of Allah, Allah is with you. And if Allah is with you, you're not going to be what? You're not going to be sad. Because even when you're tested, like with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's amazing. You should like read his seerah, but with those eyes. After the battle of Uhud, when the Muslims got defeated, so many Muslims of them were killed, so many Muslims of them were injured. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his body was injured. After they finished, he tells the Sahaba, line up so they can, we can in salah praise and thank Allah Azza wa Jal. After such a defeat, O Prophet of Allah, after a defeat, you thank and praise Allah Azza wa Jal. Because even in that, even if you don't see it, and this is what it means to trust Allah Azza wa Jal, that your heart is a slave of Him. Even when you don't see it, you don't understand it. But you know that Allah Azza wa Jal, mercy is embedded in the difficulty happening at this moment. Why should you be anxious about the future? But brother, my job, insecurity, rent, rising prices, installments I need to pay, this, 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 it's weighing me down. I can't sleep. But didn't Allah Azza wa Jal give a promise? Wallahu ya'idukum maghfiratan minhu wa fadla. And Allah promises you forgiveness and provisions. Wa immin dabbatin fil ardi illa ala Allahi rizquha. There is no animal, living being, human being on the face of this earth except its provisions is provided and promised by whom? Allah Azza wa Jal. This is like a company that's saying, you know what, I'm hiring you for life. Your salary is there for life. Would you ever worry about a salary? As long as you trust them. Would you worry about your salary? Yes or no? Would you worry about tomorrow and what the rent and the food? Would you worry about this? Because there's a promise from a company that you trust that you're hired for life. No matter what happens, you're going to have something in the bank at the beginning or end of every month. So if Allah made a promise, His promise is more meaningful than the promise of human beings. So if your heart trusts Allah Azza wa Jal, there is no room for Him. There is no room for anxiety. Because even when the shaitan comes and says, what about tomorrow? He says, tomorrow is in the hands of who? Allah Azza wa Jal. I plan. But I will not worry about it. And I will not that, like, let that deter me from believing in Allah and worshipping Him and obeying Him the way that He wants me to. And if bad things happen, if they happen, the aid of Allah will descend. The aid of Allah will descend. Somebody comes and tells you, brother, you know, what if the stock market crashes? What if this happens? What if that happens? Will you be able to be patient? Will you be ready? He says, I'm going to plan. Can you be patient? Can you bear that burden? He says, understand one thing. I may not be able to at this particular moment. I may not have that strength at this particular moment. 
But if Allah decides to, t t to test me, if Allah decides to send this thing my way, and if I am close to him, I am confident that he will send to me enough patience and assistance that I'll be able to cope with this. So don't worry about it. Whatever life is going to throw at you, you have Allah Azza wa Jal who's stronger and better. But on your own, you can't. On your own, your heart will be tormented. On your own, your heart will rebel. On your own, you feel that you can't go on. Life is meaningless. You want to end it. You want to run away from it. You want to numb the pain. And we have very creative ways of numbing the pain. We go to the haram. And we invest so much money and effort in it. Or we go and indulge in excessive halal. As we said, we shop. And we shop. And we shop. And we eat. And we eat. And we talk to friends. And we go out. All of these things are there to distract us. And when we're alone, what do we do? What do we do when we're alone? You know, what do we do when we're alone? Right? Right? I can't be alone. I no longer can be alone with myself. I have to be distracted all the time. So I can't think. So I'm looking at my phone and I'm scrolling through messages. And by the way, does that make you happier? Or more depressed? <laughs> what do you think? More depressed or happier? Studies have shown, right? That Facebook, don't sue me, Facebook and others like it actually contribute to more depression. The more that you're on them, especially if you're young. That's why you really have to wait and protect your children from social media. Not when they're 11 and 9 and 10. Not even when they're 14 and 15. You graduate college. Is that too long? <laughs> Is it? Okay, high school, I don't know. And you buy your own phone. You work and you buy your own phone. But at least you've matured enough to understand the world around you, I hope. And not to be addicted to it. So when you're alone, you need actually to spend time on your own. And the, way that, the reason why we are running away from... We understand, you understand that you're running away from your own self? You don't want to hear these questions. You don't want to confront them. Because they're too painful. Because once you sit with yourself, you remember this bad thing that had happened in the past. Or bad thing that is happening right now. Or that fear that you have about tomorrow and you have not processed any of it. You have not confronted it. You have not healed. So you're troubled here. And I dare say diseased. All of us have that disease inside. So we run away, we run away, we compensate, we numb. And we live a numbed life. No, you need to actually detach. You need to give up your phone for a few hours. Detach from the online community, if it ever can be called a community, for a few hours. And sit and ask Allah Azza wa Jal for aid, for forgiveness, istighfar repeatedly. And feel that connection with Allah Azza wa Jal. And have this relationship combat those bad feelings that you have, that may have debilitated you and prevented you from going ahead. That the thoughts that keep assaulting you because you have not saved yourself from the shaitan. No, you need to sit and be with Allah Azza wa Jal so that the plan of the shaitan will fail and the plan of Allah Azza wa Jal will prevail. There is no room for sadness. Allah Azza wa Jal tells Adam, alayhi salam, about the shaitan. That he is an enemy. This is in reality, but you can think about it in terms of a parable for your life. He says, he is an enemy of yours. Don't let him drive you out of Jannah and your wife, for you will be miserable. Because you will have in it the privilege, the bounty of not going hungry or naked. وَأَنَّكَ لَا تَضْمَأُ فِيهَا وَلَا تَضْحَى And you're not going to be thirsty or hot in it. Here is Jannah for you or Adam and to your wife. 
And here is your enemy that's going to try to drive you out. In Jannah, you're not going to toil. You're not going to be troubled. You're going to eat. You're going to drink. You're going to be clothed. You're not going to be hot. It's a perfect life. As long as you're aware. In Jannah. There is a metaphoric, allegorical Jannah in this life. There is. As long as you are with Allah Azza wa Jal, with the righteous and the virtuous, you're trying to be close, you're in this allegorical Jannah. And the shaitan is not going to wait and be happy for you to be there. What is he going to try to do? Drive you out. And Allah is saying, as long as you are there, you're going to be happy. Life is going to throw at you stuff, but you'll be able to take it, process it, and turn it into something positive. The sadness, can you believe that some of the early Muslims, when bad things would happen to them, they would smile? Do you know that Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, rahimahullah, who lost his dear son, Abdul Malik, who was a pious son, very kind to his father, very close to Allah Azza wa Jalla. Like his piety is like the piety of his father. When he stood on his grave, bidding him farewell, he says, I am going to miss you. This is the mu'min. I'm going to miss you. It's not that you're going to exit your humanity when you're a believer. You're going to miss the people that you're going to lose. But he says, I do not wish to change the destiny of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And I do not wish that you'd be alive today because Allah chose otherwise. And I know that Allah's choice is better than what? My choice. Can you trust Allah's choice more than your choice? Can you say, Ya Allah Azza wa Jal, I love you so much and I trust you so much. You are a better designer of my life than I am. When do you get frustrated? By age 22, I'll graduate. By 25, I get my own place. By 30, I'm a millionaire. Again, millionaire, right? And then by age 40, I'll have my own mansion. And, by, and then by age 40, you're still living with your parents, right? I don't know if this happens here, but over there it happens, right? So, okay. So life is not going according to plan. I'm depressed now. There's a design and there's another design. You try your best, but it doesn't happen. And it doesn't happen because this is Allah's design. And you're not a believer until you're really happy with Allah's design. And if you're really happy with Allah's design, whatever you have is more than enough. And if you thank Allah for what He gives you, and that needs a contented heart, rida, not one that is resentful all the time looking at the things that I do not have. If you look at the things that you do not have, you're the poorest person if you, if you, even if you're rich. You're sick even if you're healthy. You're miserable even though you're supposed to be happy and you have everything. If you look at the things that you have and you thank Allah for them, what happens? Not only are you happy, but Allah Azza wa Jal will bless what you have. So a way of actually getting more. Uh, don't hold me to it like, okay, I'm going to thank Allah more and my money is going to double. Allah will bless you in different ways, okay? But thank Allah for what you have, even if it is little, coming out from a grateful heart. And Allah will keep giving you more and more until you see that you have this entire world in your hand. Rasulullah said in the hadith, it says, if you wake up in the morning, mu'afan fi jasadih, aminan fi sirbih, he says, if you wake up in the morning and you are healthy and you are safe and you have enough food for today, you've got in this entire world collected for you. These are the basic human needs. Most of us have that, right? Even with some inconveniences, I may not be 100% healthy. But enough, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Look at the positive. And safe, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. And enough food, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. What does he say, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? You're rich. You're rich. If you take this and you believe in it, you'll walk outside your home, 
with a smile. And you'll thank Allah for every small thing that you see. Every small thing that he gives you. And if there is some bad thing that happens, you know Allah is, is testing me. Allah is sending this beautiful thing my way to take away a sin and elevate me in Jannah. You receive this with gratitude, with patience, and that even makes you happy. And my God, that, nothing brings this guy down. Nothing brings that guy down. And at the end of the day, you're even happier. Because you've lived another day that brought you close to Allah Azza wa Jal. So when Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Ya Allah, I seek your protection from ham and hazan. It doesn't only mean, Ya Allah, this is just you, just do it. Just do it. No. When you ask Allah Azza wa to protect you from kufr, disbelief. Are you simply asking, Ya Allah, do all the work and I'm going to just go into disbelief? Or you stay, so you're supposed to stay away from it? You're supposed to stay away from it. Anything that you ask Allah to protect you from, you need to take active steps to protect yourself from it. So when you say, Ya Allah, protect me from worry, anxiety, and sadness and grief, you're supposed to take active steps to protect yourself from it. Beginning with what? Remembering Allah often. Remembering His wisdom. Reading the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. And one of the greatest tools that you have is the book of Allah. Don't just read it. Flip through the pages reading for barakah. There is barakah in every single letter and word that you read. But you should read it for something else. Not just for the melody. And there is comfort in the melody. And sometimes when you're down, just hearing the melody of the Quran makes you feel better. But don't just read it for that and not even mainly for that. You want to read it for the message inside. What is Allah saying? So read the Quran with a translation. Read the Quran with a commentary. And try to understand from the commentary for your portion of recitation for that day. How does it apply to the question that you're asking Allah Azza wa Jal? If in your dua you're asking Allah a question. I still have 10 minutes. Wow, that's a lot of time. Okay. Khair inshallah. I'll try to fill it with some jokes or whatever. Inshallah. I don't have any jokes. Okay, but anyway. But when you're reading the Quran and you're making dua to Allah Azza wa Jal. And you're asking Allah certain things. Why does this thing happen to me? Why does it keep happening to me? How do I overcome this anxiety? Something bad happened in the past. I'm afraid that it's going to repeat in the future. How do I gain strength? How do I be close to you? And you're asking all of these questions. And you're looking for answers. There are two ways that you can find these answers. One, you go to a trusted sheikh, to a trusted imam, and you ask them, how? Why? When? And they'll give you an answer. But there's also another way where Allah is going to give you an answer. If you establish a connection through the Quran, where you're actually looking for a message in the Quran from Allah to you, and you keep at it, and you keep reading, and you keep reading, and you keep searching, one of those days, one of those hours, you're going to be reading, and an ayah will jump at you. And that be the ayah that you're looking for. You've heard it hundreds of times before. But now you're hearing it in a different light. Now you can see Allah talking to you, answering the same question that you've asked Allah Azza wa Jal. And at that moment, I want you to know and feel that Allah is talking to you. And this ayah, in a sense, has been revealed fresh for you. Take it. Don't sleep. Take it. Praise Allah for it and apply it. Follow it. How do I combat this? By enslaving your heart, not for the dunya, but for Allah. Don't think, despite the beauty of this dunya, that it can make you happy. It'll make you happy, but miserable. It will give, but it will take the thing that it gave you. Everything that rises in this dunya, every matter, as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa had said, that rises of the matters of this dunya must, what? 
fall. You're healthy, but you will become sick. You're rich, but you're going to become what? poor. I forgot what I was saying. Okay. And then you're going to be strong, but you're going to become weak. Famous and then forgotten and despised. Everything of this dunya is going to go away. It is going to give you, but make you miserable, but also take it away. The only investment that you're going to make that is never going to run out is when you give to Allah Azza wa and you know this is safe. And I will see it when I see Allah Azza wa Jal. So may Allah Azza wa Jal, Rabb al if there is any pain in your heart, may Allah take it away. If there is any anxiety, may Allah put serenity in your heart. If there is any sadness, may Allah erase it completely and make you among the happy in this life and in the next. If our hearts are attracted to the dunya, we ask Allah Azza wa Jal, yes, to give us what we need of the dunya, but make us a slave of his, not a slaves of the dunya. May Allah Azza wa Jal make our pursuit the hereafter, not the pursuit of the dunya. May Allah Azza wa Jal resurrect you when he resurrects us all with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and make us worthy of that resurrection. Jazakumullahu khaira. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa an astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Walhamdulillahi rabbil. Thank you.